How you doing? I'm your pal Mike Squires, and this is the Couchers Podcast, episode number 226. And my guest this episode is William Goldsmith. Now, this is an episode which is a carryover from Drummer Awareness Month. It was slated to be released. However, we talked about some things in this episode that could not be uh, made public until now. Um, William is the drummer for Sunny Day Real Estate, uh, one of the great underappreciated, you know, like people people love Sunny Day Real Estate, but they they're not known like Soundgarden or Alice in Chains, uh, except in certain circles, I suppose. However, uh, they just made a number of exciting announcements. Uh, and what do you think? I'm just going to tell you what they are. You're going to have to listen to the fucking episode, you animals. Uh, what do you want for free? Uh, William is a monster drummer. Monster. A ferocious beast behind the drum kit. Uh, also uh, was the first drummer in the Foo Fighters. His current band is Assertion who has a record out and is uh, wrapping up a second record. I've heard some of that second record and it is incredible. Um, also the fire theft and has toured with a, a couple of the folks. So I had a great time talking with William. I hope that you enjoy this episode. Um, as I said, it was my intention to release this with drummer awareness, but you know, here's the thing about Coutress. We, we are, year-round aware dedicated to the awareness of drummers we are we want to be fully aware it's the most important part of your band um one of the four reasons that sunny day real estate is amazing uh if you're enjoying the couchless podcast please 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 support us at patreon patreon.com slash couch uh, your support there is what makes this happen, and more importantly, is what makes the cover song videos happen. Um, there, you know, I get a lot of support there, and every every dime of that gets spent on the services that I use to make these things happen, pay for audio services, and pay for the video audio to get mixed. I cut the videos myself. I don't pay myself anything. I send gifts off to everyone that appears in a video. All that stuff costs money. So I say all this because what I mean to say is thank you very much to everyone who supports. It takes a huge burden off of me to make all this happen. So thank you. Uh, also, please buy my shit uh, at the website. There's a whole, there's an Etsy store, but don't do it for the next two weeks. Cause I'm going to be on tour. I have a couple people I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank variety coffee roasters in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I drink variety coffee every single morning. I don't know. I don't know what better endorsement I can give a product, uh, but it's delicious. I love it. It gets me excited to start my day. Uh, I never run out of coffee. You know why? Subscription. I have a subscription. Uh, if you would like to never, ever have to remember to put coffee on your list or you want to just like have surprises, go over there. Uh, VarietyCoffeeRoasters.com. Click a couple buttons. They'll send you coffee every week, every two weeks, every month, whatever you want. As much as you want, as little as you want. It's fucking great. What are you waiting for? Go do it now. Come back and listen to the rest of the episode. Follow them on social at Variety Coffee Roasters. Um, and tell them I said hi. I would also like to thank uh, River City Guitars in Spokane, Washington. River City Guitars is a very uh, specialized, by appointment only, boutique, vintage, used guitar store. And, you know, not like uh, uh, stacked up. Those are sort of like uh, in, ser in parallel, not in series uh, descriptors. Come here, Mr. Bates. So, uh, every day is a buying day over there. If you have some cool vintage guitar, amp, pedal, drums, whatever you got, 
uh, give them a shout, sales.rivercityguitars at gmail.com. Also, be sure to follow them on Reverb. They just got a gang of amazing 80s guitars. You would not believe this shit. A bunch of like th- three digit 70s hammers, standards, sunbursts, all, like the kind of stuff that I wake up in a cold sweat about. These are like fantasy guitars for me. So go follow them over there. Support this family business. They're very, I've gotten a number of guitars from them. They've also sold one of the Marvin CN90s. Look at that. I got a new one. I got my new number one. You are the new number one. Um, Thank you, River City Guitars. Now, listen, we're going to get into the episode. Thank you, William. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing, leaving uh, some reviews, whatever it is that you're going to do. Thank you for sharing and liking, I, you know, whatever. I hate asking for whatever do it do what you want but most importantly don't forget the golden rule all right treat people the way you want to be treated and just do your best to not be a dick (laughs) hey hi all of a sudden the voices crack and i've only done a couple of these things before so (laughs) (laughs) I, i i love that you have the uh the trainer yba back there oh yeah yeah that's um so uh <clears throat> yeah justin uh from assertion my my band is uh so he plays through his varellen head and then also through that trainer and then through two uh calves um well he's a man of fine and mighty taste i'd say well uh, so we're a two-piece now so he's using octave pedals and stuff so basically we're trying to capture the whole you know spectrum of sound with just his guitar so we're getting the low the mids highs basically with just him. all you're getting all of the frequencies yeah yeah two piece you're <laughs> putting the freaking frequency hey and let me know if i start talking too quiet because i'm trying really hard to not yell at you <laughs> like the, like the deaf guy <laughs> anyway, do you have uh do you have hearing damage from symbols years of symbols no actually what I got, I got on a, I know, well, I mean, okay, maybe, maybe a little, but, uh, my left ear, I lost 70% of my hearing because I got an ear infection and then had to get on a plane like three days later, which was a really bad idea. And, uh, my eardrum, my ear just exploded, eardrum ruptured and landed and it sucked. I was going down to play Coachella the Sunday day real estate was playing Coachella and then we were going to go and record some songs. And so it was a very, un- very painful and uncomfortable experience. I've never felt it was like somebody had their body weight against a screwdriver against inside your ear while you're uh, hand against the wall. That's what it felt really, really brutal. But yeah, so that's how it Wait happened. a minute. Let me, time. I want to, I want to reel it back a, a, just a couple sentences. <laughs> I didn't sure. know that Sunday day played Coachella. Yeah, in, in 2009, late 2009. Uh, the only visual that I have of Coachella is people playing on the super duper mega stage. Did you guys yeah. play on the super duper mega stage? You know, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know. I don't remember what stage it was. Uh, I'm not sure which stage. It didn't seem super duper mega, <laughs> but no. I mean, maybe it was. I don't know. It's kind of a blur. I literally, I, the, I was I was in so much pain during that whole period that everything is a little bit of a blur. So right, but yeah, that was tricky. But man, yeah. So if you ever have an ear infection, do not get on a plane. It was very dumb. So uh, well, I don't need an ear infection and an and a flight to destroy my hearing. Yeah, indeed. Oh, really? You got I've... hearing damage? Well, this is one of the reasons why we do drummer drummer awareness. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have drummer awareness month here i know um, i'm sorry i've been aware of drummers for always because i've played with a lot of hard hitting drummers mm-hmm. and uh drummers that hit hard hit the cymbals hard and those cymbals yeah. I, I don't care what anyone says my hearing has not been damaged from guitar amps yeah yeah from the cymbals i mean yeah. i wear uh hearing i mean i wear you know protection i actually wear cans a lot of the time really um yeah, because I think they accentuate the vibration, and since I'm so pretty much, so deaf on my left side, it 
it's kind of an inconvenience, so I kind of just sort of increase the actual feeling, the vibration, which cans can sometimes help. But do. not in ear monitors. I, I've used in ear monitors. I mean, uh, but that was bef way before the hearing damage. So I haven't actually tried using in ears since I've uh, lost my hearing in my left ear. So that would be an interesting experiment. They're a little disappointing on the low end, unless you have a lot of dough to spend on them, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it's difficult to get a, a good mix. You know what I mean? Um, a guy Do you I know use a kicker? Tor... Do you use one of those uh, technological uh, <laughs> oh, wonder... Yeah. <laughs> you mean like a, the subwoofer connected to your drum seat? Yeah, the wonder seat. Okay, so a long time ago, same time we were using in-ears... We we got one of those. We tried it out, and um, but um, Greg, who was doing front of house and running our in ears, for some reason he kept running the entire band through the, <laughs> through the subwoofer <laughs> on the seat. So literally, like that thing would kick on, and I would just be like, Brrr. so I just finally told him to turn it off and didn't even. Try You're talking about greedy. Back. Yeah, 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 yeah. He hadn't quite dialed it in yet. Yes, <laughs> greedy. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure that now he could probably get it dialed in. I'm sure. Back then, yeah. But yeah, it was a, I mean, it was, but it was tricky. You know, he was basically running in ears and doing front of house at the same time. So, right. And it's my, like someone doing and monitors my, in front of house my, at the same time. Yeah. And my butt sub. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> For people who don't know what we're talking about, yeah, I assume that, that most people will, but, uh, you know, there's always some new gadget marketed to musicians to make their lives quote easier. Uh -huh. And for drummers, um, this thing sort of coincided with the use of in-ear monitors for bass players and drummers. In-ears are kind of rough because mm -hmm. um, a lot of the low end is missing in those things, unless you've got eight drivers and those things cost like 2,500 bucks. And I don't have 2,500 bucks sitting around for a pair of fancy earbuds. Yeah, man. Uh, I know. So drummers have these things that are like subwoofers planted inside of their drum throne. And when they hit the kick drum, they physically feel it. In theory. Yeah. Right. In, in, <laughs> in theory. But, but, but our sound man who was running that ac kept accidentally running the bass, the keys, <laughs> the, guitar, the guitar, everything, the whole band through the sub and uh and it just the whole yeah so that doesn't work obviously but uh by the way really quick uh i actually can't see you anymore can you see me oh yeah so occasionally because of the way this platform works one of us might disappear and it'll give you a little message and it'll say oh, okay. oh the video has gone away or even if okay. there's a little bit of herky jerkiness if that ever mm -hmm. happens yeah don't worry because it's recording in a constant timeline got you and okay. they'll they'll sync up. Uh, okay, cool. I was afraid for a second, but now I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah, fear not, <laughs> fear not. Uh, the uh, the uh, the debacle with your subwoofer wonder throne is particularly <laughs> funny to me because there's a lot of there's a lot of musical and low end movement in your music in the music of Sunny Day, and so mm. I imagine it would have been chaos. Yeah, and, and actually, that was uh, that was fire theft that we were trying. Oh, those, actually, it was all just during the fire theft that we were trying the in ears, and we Got did it, it for a while. Um, yeah, but then, um, but I, but then there was also an issue because Jeremy realized that he was allergic to whatever it was that his earbuds were made out of. So then oh, he stopped using them. But um, he could actually probably just get a different, get them made out of something else that he's not allergic to. But uh, Right, but he just kind of stopped using them after that. So yeah, it would be nice None. to give it a shot again. I think it would probably be nicer for him. And you're right; it is really hard for. I mean, you, somebody has to really, really have their stuff dialed to get like a drummer uh, a mix, an in ear mix that is really satisfying. You know, so it's tricky. The, since we're already t since we're talking about mixes, this is a kind of a backwards conversation already, and sort of funny. Uh, <laughs> since we're talking about in ears and and we're gonna let that one just keep going, we're gonna let that one float by. Uh, I've never <laughs> had to one of the 
one of the hardest lessons about playing gigs is no one tells you how to how to ask for a monitor mix. No one teaches no one really teaches you that, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lesson that's hard learned. And a lot of people I know, and especially drummers, have a very just sort of stubborn like because you're used to being in the room, right? You're in the room, you're pounding it out. You're just like, I'm just going to power through it and I know the songs. And then when there's a break, I'll hear the thing. How do you, how do you run your monitor mix? And do you have a wedge and um, a side fill or just a side fill? It all depends on where we're playing, you know, where we're playing. Yeah. You know, but I mean, late, lately I've been playing places where there's no monitor at all for me or, uh, you know, or there's a big, you know, wedge. Um, I mean, I, so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting now because, um, it's just Justin and I, so essentially I'm just going to be, it's going to be pretty uh, simplified because it's just going to be vocals and his guitar. But then as far as everything else, like say sunny day or when assertion was playing as a four piece, I would usually get Justin's guitar, the loudest, his vocals, behind that a little bit a uh, little bit behind that a little bit of bass but not so much bass to where it's killing the low end of my kick drum you know and then um and then usually like the other guitar maybe just tucked underneath justin's but um you know but then also you know with sunny day there'll be some times where i would just get jeremy's guitar and vocals in my in my monitor and then it just depends on the place. Each room is always completely different and any, any preconceived, you know, any expectations go flying out the window from room to room. You, it's sure. always different and it's always going to be a shit show unless you like, like calm down and try to figure out exactly how you're going to adapt to the room. So, which is tricky to do, you know, I certainly don't have it mastered. That's by, by any means, but you know, I don't think. Okay, and now now we'll start a more conventional conversation. <laughs> now they got some of the uh now that we got the nerd stuff out of the way. Oh, really? That's that's all the nerd stuff we're going to do? No. No, okay. that's the tip of the nerdberg. <laughs> gross. That sounded really gross. <laughs> uh anyway. Wh where are you where are you from? Oh, no, I'm, uh, I grew up in, um, I was born in Seattle at Virginia Mason Hospital. Oh. And then, uh, I grew up in Kirkland, which is, you know, about 11 minutes outside of downtown Seattle and, sure. um, give or take. And then, um, yeah. And then I, then I lived in many different places in Seattle and then I spent, I don't know, 15 to 17 the better part of years on the road kind of you know here and you know on and off but i spent a lot of time on the road and uh so then there was a lot a long time where i just literally wasn't really living anywhere you know or then you know some my parents would let me crash i would stay at their place when i wasn't on the road but i was like home so infrequently you know what i mean i was always gone so so you know but, but you yeah, grew up so in Seattle. Place, but I'm from Seattle. Well, I grew up in Kirkland. Yeah. Um, Born in Seattle. I went to high school. I went to high school at O'Day High School. <laughs> uh -huh. It's on Capitol Hill in Seattle. So, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> They're not, not I don't know why I told of... you my high school. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I don't know why I told you what high school I went to. I have no idea. <laughs> but, uh. That's a thing that Seattle people do. Is it really? For sure. People, uh, Seattle oh, well, people define strange. what high school they went to. Okay. I'm not, I don't think I'm one of those. Let's let me, let me clarify. I think the reason I said it is because you said, so you grew up in Seattle. I was like, well, I grew up in Kirkland, but I did spend a lot of time in Seattle because I went to school there sure. in high school anyway. So I think that was my point. <laughs> I'm oh, not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're about the same age. I turned fifty uh, this year. Are you are you fifty? Yeah, I'm. I am. I'm about to turn. I'm about to turn. Yeah, I'm about to turn fifty. I'm forty nine. 
Yeah. yeah. So safe to say you grew up reading the Rocket magazine. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um I was really surprised how little grunge I discovered when I finally moved from a small town to Seattle. And, you know, one of many really great things that I discovered was Sunny Day. Um, and I, I guess I'm Which curious. Which not grunge at all. <laughs> no, not grunge. To like decidedly ungrunge. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, although, you know, a lot of the classic... What I guess what I thought of as grunge, you know, Mud Honey and the first two Soundgarden recordings, Melvins, mm-hmm. those things are I they're great. That's all great. Yeah. Fuck it. Definitely. Um. The the melting pot of music in Seattle is a. Uh, is much more interesting than what people sort of historically, you know, view it as. And Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering how, wondering how it, how the band came together and what sort of like, what's the recipe? What, like, what did, uh, what did you bring to the table? Um, what were your influences? The recipe, so so vast and varied i mean i could literally go on forever but i mean but at at that time like a lot of the stuff like we were so we were very a lot of people won't be very surprised i don't think to hear this but and especially dan like we had a big rights of spring in, sure. influence or very inspired by rights of spring uh lungfish so we were definitely inspired by a lot of bands from dc definitely at that time but also like bands from louisville like uh slint uh uh but then also you know like jeremy and i when we were playing in this uh hardcore band together (laughs) called called reason for hate (laughs) um (laughs) we uh, asked what are you gonna do um we uh like a band like no means no was like a huge like beacon of light of like we're never gonna be that good but we're still gonna play music anyway and, and what a monster so we're, a we're very inspired oh my god machine uh, yeah i still am I, I still man anytime i think of no means no i'm just like oh my god <laughs> it's just just amazing uh I mean, you know, it's all their records, obviously, but like wrong was just poof, that record is just wow, just so amazing and inspirational. So, but with Sunny Day doesn't sound anything like them, but huge inspiration to play, you know, for sure. But yeah. Did your proximity to Seattle uh, introduce you to less mainstream music or was it just did it have nothing to do with actual seattle and more to do with just young people discovering punk rock music yeah i'd say more that and like i mean we so at the same time that the whole um grunge seattle thing you know whatever was becoming like a really big deal we were in this, our own little like world and it was like this hardcore scene and we played, you know, shows at the party hall, which was like a cement box on 21st in Madison, you know, um, Washington hall, Washington hall before that. But, uh, um, but that was before me, I was a late, I was a late comer, you know, like I was, uh, you know, I was listening to like permanent waves and quadrophenia and, and, uh, and uh, you know, twenty one twelve, and I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, just Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, like Beatles, but also like Talking Heads, Elvis Costello. My brother really turned me on to a bunch of music, and uh, so like I was living in that world. But then also I had discovered No Means No as well, and um, through John Atkins. John Atkins was also a huge John Atkins from 
Hush Harbor. Hush Harbor, yeah, and 764 Hero. Like, so when, so he and I went to high school together, and like going over to his house was literally like you, you, he would like pull out this like pot of gold and you'd be, he'd be like showing it to you and be like, wow, where did you get that? And he's like, this has got rainbow over there, you know, but just throw, <laughs> throw on records, you know, and he goes, check this out. And he like does harmonies. And I'm like, oh, you know, like literally, like as if he discovered them. But it was really cool because we were so, so naive and it was just so magical. You know what I mean? And it, uh, that's what was really cool about it. So John was like a, a huge uh, resource as far as like, have you ever heard this record? Have you ever heard this record? And I think that John has been that resource for many people for decades now. He's so great. Yeah, oh, he's genius. <laughs> for sure. So. I worked downstairs from him and he was, uh, he was upstairs at Max, Maximilian maybe, or he was washing dishes in the Pike Place Market. And I worked uh, in the produce stand downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. We became we became buddies then. I saw Hush Harbor play uh, with you guys at Mo, at the old Mo Bar. Oh wow, really? Yeah, that was great. Wow. I don't. I didn't remember that we did a show with Hush Harbor at at Mo, old Mo. Crazy. Uh, Mo's Mo Rockin' Cafe. Yeah. Oh yeah, crazy. Wow. Um, um but yeah, so yeah, John. <clears throat> John would like constantly. He was actually John was the person that introduced me to No Means No. For sure. Oh wow! <clears throat> so yeah, but anyway, I think I got I derailed myself from the uh, answer from the question, which is <laughs> what I often do. I overexplain and then forget the question. So uh, so it was a completely different world that we were in. So it was like you know it was we were all playing in hardcore bands, and so you know like and I was playing in Positive Greed, and you know there was. Aspirin Feast and uh, Christ Under Crutch, which, you know, had like Nate and Eric who were in, you know, Diddly Squat, you know, uh, previous to that. And um, and um, Guyon's Lap, you know, and Brotherhood and Undertow. I mean, I could just go on and on and on and on, you know. And uh, the first tour I ever did was with Positive Greed, went on tour with Born Against and uh, Anti-Schism and uh, Rorschach. And that was a hell of a way to cut my teeth. That's for sure. But uh, but that was a really cool experience. And everybody in anti-schism were just, uh, everybody was nice, but we, uh, there was a special bond that we had with everybody in anti-schism. They're really great people. And at this time, we're talking about, you're like 20 years old? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I was, uh, I was 18 and just about to turn, I was just 18, just turning 19. No. So how long had you been playing the drums by then? Um, not very long. I, I started when I was 13. I wanted to start when I was five, but um, it took me until I was 13 to get my parents to get me, buy me a drum kit. So, you know, they didn't believe me. They were just like, oh, it's, it's a passing thing, you know. So finally, after how many years? Long time. They finally gave in. You knew that you wanted to be a drummer, though. Yeah. There was nothing, there was no other component of rock and roll that appealed to, to you. Um, well, so I used to play the Beatles at recess, but I always was kind of conflicted because I wanted to be Ringo, but also John <laughs> at the same time. So I was a little <laughs> bit confused. So, uh, but yeah, I, drumming was what really, yeah, it was really uh, what moved me. I had an imaginary friend who was a drummer, which is weird. I know that's weird, but, you know. Uh, is it that weird? I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's not. <laughs> Pretty common. But, you know, it just so happens. And, and he was a little bit Ringo-ish, actually, I think. <laughs> It'd be weirder if your imaginary friend was like a physicist. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Although that would actually be very interesting, too, though. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was, he was a drummer, for sure. When, How long after you got your drum kit and you were like, all right, I'm a drummer now. Did you realize that you had chosen the hardest job in the band um, and you were about to you were about to embark on a career of the most important, like no matter what band you're in, you're, it's going to be the most important because if your drummer sucks, your band sucks. Yes. That's Everyone true. else can can not be technically good, but your drummer has to be good 
Yeah, and that was a huge, it was a huge challenge for me because I was totally self-taught because I was like an ADHD kid, <laughs> you know, still am an ADHD adult medium <laughs> to adult senior. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I, my, uh, I, it was so difficult for me to, you know, I tried taking like two lessons and I just was like, ah, you know, so I just didn't have the, you know, I didn't do well in school. I, you know, so I just did. So, so yeah, so then I just did it on my own. I wish that I hadn't done that probably would have, uh, you know, you know, I, I would be a lot better if I, <laughs> if I hadn't have gone that road, but, uh, I hope that's the road I took. So it is what it is. How quickly did you pick up the basic concepts of drumming? Because there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of mechanical, it's a dance more than mm -hmm. any other instrument. It's a, it's a physical dance. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I just immediately just went, went to town and just started just, you know, I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't completely incoherent at the same time. So I played like I played, I did a drum solo for the talent show. Like literally, I think, I swear it was like a week or two after I got my drums. <laughs> so, and, uh, pretty yeah. excited. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was ready to go, you know? <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, there's some funny stories about that, but also kind of embarrassing, but I mean, is but there it was, a video uh, recording of that around floating around? There is really <laughs> there is. I posted actually a clip of it. I posted probably one of the most coherent clips, <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, it's funny. I mean, it's literally just like this kid completely just unbridled, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll find the post and I'll, I'll, I'll tag your name so you can check it out. But, uh, oh, I would but yeah, so there's that. that, uh, that, yeah. And, uh, but I mean, yeah, I was completely just flying blind, but then I also would, um, so then after that, then I spent a lot of time with my, I, my brother let me use his old stereo and he had these big speakers and I set those up and I would basically blast records and then try to play, play along to them. So like, and that was, you know, an interesting experience. So, but that's how I learned how to do like doubles and stuff with playing along to John Bonham, things like that. So a lot of Zeppelin in those formative Zeppelin, months and years. Zeppelin, yeah, The Who and uh, and Rush a lot. And uh, uh, but I mean, you know, I I it took me a while to be able to even you know keep 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 up. But you know, I I, I managed to sort of like get by. And then when I when I and then I had started playing. I immediately started a band too. We were called the Screaming Hormones, and there wasn't anybody in my eighth grade class that really could play anything. But my friend Jason had a little keyboard, and and uh, Peter Augustino brought a uh, like a microphone, and we had we had a little amp, and it was just absolutely terrible, but uh, but funny, you know. But it had to sure. start somewhere. So, but then when we got to high school. Um, we tried to keep the band going, and then we meet all these other guys and meet John Atkins. And so we get together and I'm, and John Atkins shows up and he's playing bass. I'm like, Oh shit. I was like, he can actually play. This is amazing. <laughs> so then, uh, so then the screaming hormones went from being about like a seven or eight member band to two people, <laughs> me and John basically breaking off. And then John basically just actually started playing guitar. And then, uh, yeah, we his were, first two piece I, band. Yeah, my his first two piece band. We, yeah, it's true, and we were called the Thirteen, and uh, yeah. So yeah, did you guys do fun. any recordings? No, man. God, I wish we had. I, I wish we had even boom. So stupid. We didn't even think to like do like a boombox recording back then. I don't know why we didn't. But uh, there's so many time, so many things that I wish that somebody had just thrown up a, at least just a boombox. You know, so many things that I wish I could hear again from back then just just because it's interesting you know you're still in touch with john i haven't seen him for a long time and it's unfortunately a friendship that i didn't do a good job nurturing but then again i also didn't do a good job nurturing any of my friendships i kind of disappeared for about nine years but even before that i you know i don't think i was in the best spot to you know i i was kind of sorting through my own shit so you know 
I love him to death. Uh, we never had like a falling out. I just, I just wasn't present. So yeah. that's my fault and my loss, but doesn't change the inspiration and influence he's had and on me and also my ability to recognize the influence and inspiration that he's had on, you know, everyone, everyone else, you know? So, yeah. You took a long break from music, yeah. but you, you've had more than one break. Uh, there was a period where I kind of stopped for, uh, like a year. Um, uh, um, trying to figure out how to not get all heavy. My brother shot himself in the head and I just kind of sh shut down. And, uh, and so that was when I took a break for a year and then I started playing again and did the Brawley Banks, a band called Brawley Banks. And uh, that was with um, uh, Justin Schwartz and Joram Young. They were in a band called Cobra Cobra High. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah. And then um, Jeremy Nuestro, Tony Palmasani, uh, Ben Strell eventually joined. There was a lot of people in the band. Um, it was a really inspired time. And then uh, yeah, we took a break because we were recording a record, and then we took a break because I went and did that sunny day reunion thing in 2009 and that's when we played coachella so it was at that time but uh so yeah and then when i got done with that break or when i got done with the sunny day reunion um uh our guitar player had quit bass player had to move to guam just everything went, you know. so yeah that record remains unfinished all the basics tracked but there it still sits you know, but it was inspired. Right. It was a, it was a really inspired, uh, inspiring and inspired time for sure. So. How have yeah. you, how have you taken a break and then, and refound your inspiration and, and then, and also jumped back into playing with such a fire? Uh, my, when I, met Justin Tominga and was interested in what he was doing because he was teaching music to children and then also uh, children that uh, um, that uh, have autism. And uh, my son has autism. And so I was very interested in that. And then I saw the band that Justin has with his daughter Dahlia and his son Lucian called Pig Snout. And, um, <laughs> and it completely knocked me off my on my ass, man. And well, they're great songs are amazing, but it hit me. I saw this man, this father, sharing that magical part of himself. You know, music it's the only form of magic you have to share with your kids. That's the only magic I have. And it hit me that I was not only not sharing that with my kids, but I was literally pretending like it didn't exist. They didn't even know. And I, it just hit me. I was like, wow, this is a total crime. <laughs> what I'm doing. I, this is, this is, I need to pull my head out of my ass and I need to make music again. And I need to share that part of myself with them. You know? How old were your kids at that time? So that would be, God. So, I mean, my era was like head. And my era, I think was only what, like, one i think she was she was just a baby you know still and then um logan was oh man logan was i guess three or so three had he yeah. even seen your drum kit like was it in the garage or you just had it boxed just up and it. yeah i just I, I just had it yeah stored in the garage but then i uh yeah i got everything out and and uh set it all up and have been sort of fine tuning. And this time it's been different because I, uh, before I only ever practiced when the band practiced, I never, ever practiced by myself. I never, I never were, you know what I mean? I wasn't like a drummer's drummer, but this time around I can play every day, like every single day and trying to basically get out of my own sort of, you know, 
box, you know, like, and sort of like explore new patterns and just sort of work on refinement and just do things and try things and try to, uh, uh, reinforce or actually, you know, like, uh, awaken like things that literally I hadn't, I had neglected, you know? So, so yeah, so I'm actually trying to actually a, You were a not a rudimentary drummer. guy. You weren't like a par- working on your paradiddles and your flamadoos and your. No, no. I, yeah, man. I, I had no like drum core training. No, nothing, nothing. Everything was just completely just seat of my pants, you know? So, and like, I, like I said, I regret that, but in one way, it's kind of interesting that someone actually, you know, actually, you know, somehow managed to actually <laughs> like go out and play, you know, <laughs> and actually have no idea what they're doing. You know, I it's guess funny. it's not, it doesn't strike me as being that unusual because your formative years were spent with those speakers on either side of you playing along to songs. Yes. And so if that's how you play drums, playing by yourself probably felt unnatural. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I didn't really ever, I've never thought about it like that, but yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. But I didn't do that at first. At first I literally was like trying to like create little patterns on my own, but, but then all of a sudden the light bulb went off. I was like, Oh, I'm going to play along to, (laughs) you know, but it's funny now you can use headphones back then. It was just <laughs> super right. loud, you know, it was terrible, but, um, but yeah, so, but yeah, so now I'm trying to, cause also I'm teaching now. So I'm having to basically go and, you know, like sort of like go in and sort of work on refinement and, you know, bring things to the table, you know, because some people are totally beginners and some people are absolutely not that I'm working with. So you are know. you teaching at a school? Are you teaching so, uh, online lessons? How are you how are you teaching? Yeah. Through Zoom. Oh, cool. Oh, so if yeah, yeah. Uh, if people wanted to get are you taking more students or are you at your capacity? Yeah. No, no, I'm still taking more students. Yeah. For sure. So people could reach out to you through social media or Yeah. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. I've every now and again, I'll throw up a little thing saying, Hey, you know, I have some slots available. So yeah, can't, I can't work enough because I mean, I've got kids. So is the more work I can get the better. Sure. (laughs) So, yeah. How has teaching affected your playing? I, you know, it's often been said like the best, best way to learn is to teach. Yeah. I, really kind of is because it's forcing me to go and like, like work on things that, you know, I completely just neglected before or, and I just explore patterns that are counterintuitive to things that I would naturally play to try to sort of get myself to think out of my own comfort zone, you know, so, and try to make things that are uncomfortable, comfortable. Right. Know? So. Uh, tell me ab- about how, if you recall how you were feeling emotionally when you unpacked your drums. Um, I unpacked them and I set them up. I didn't put the symbols. I, I took a picture. I remember there's symbols like sort of all over the ground and, huh. uh, and uh, you know, and I was just like set everything up. And then it was like a little while before, I actually sat down and played actually quite a long while. It was like, I had set up my drums. I'd set up my drums actually before I even met Justin, I'd set them up, but then I didn't put the cymbals on and then I just still didn't touch them. And uh, they were up above the garage where I am now. I didn't touch them. And then it was when I met Justin and saw his band with his kids. And then, you know, Justin was like, Hey man, we should jam. I was like, okay. (laughs) You know, sounds like a plan. So what what was it that held you back from just jumping just because you only played along two bands up until that time what you mean why did i stop playing yeah, drums yeah, what do you think the threshold was that was keeping you from playing you didn't uh, even tune them yeah yeah you mean you mean like from when i set them up you mean yeah or are you talking about the previous nine years 
<laughs> no, once you once you unpacked them, okay, we'll, we'll go back to that. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't. Yeah, that's heavy. But uh, um, <gasps> um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I know. I'm sure there's a. I'm sure there's a reason, but I haven't been. I haven't really found like honed in on the, you know, precise thing that I could articulate proficiently. You know, so I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just, it was like a, uh, you know, but, uh, and but yeah, was it was the first just... time that you did play, uh, when he came over. Yeah. 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 So... Actually the very first time I played, the very first time I played was I went over to his house and I jammed with, uh, uh, Justin and his uh, daughter with like a double drummer thing. So that was the very first thing I did. And then oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it was really cool. And I was, I was like, hey, man, you know, it'd be cool to do a tr two drummer thing. You know, I could be in the band too. And she was like, it's a family band. I was like, okay. <laughs> you got, you got, uh... which I totally respect, you know, like totally respected. But, um, but come full circle, uh, we're playing a show with them with Pig Snout and Assertion are playing a show at the Spanish Ballroom here in Tacoma on, uh, the March 25th of this month. Um, Amazing. And so, and we're, I will be playing like two songs. They play like on two assertion songs where it's basically, it's just a, you know, so they've let me sort of play with the family here and there, <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, so that's cool. We do a show and they play on assertion songs. We'll play on some pig style songs and it's going to be our first show, Justin and I as a two piece. So that'll be very interesting. How uh how how do you lose half your band? Our bass player moved to Arizona. That's a good um, way. And then uh and then our uh other guitar player is a school teacher and uh when we are gonna be eventually going on tour, he won't really be able to go on tour and so that's kind of one of the reasons. And uh and so we, you know, Justin and I had been kind of like getting together the two of us and basically doing the, these rapid fire, like songwriting sessions and recordings, just like marathon recording things and really, really fun. Um, we really, we, we can, you know, songs will appear out of thin air, you know, when we, when we get together. So, and it just happens again and again. So songs will just write themselves. I really like the record. Thank and, you. Uh, when, when you guys get on the road, I hope you make it to the East coast. Uh, thank you. Second record dwarfs the first record, though. Second record, the second record, I'm so excited about. I mean, I'll listen to, I'll be listening back to it, and I'll be like, I, I'm so, I feel so like fortunate that I get to be a part of this. <sighs> you know, hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's a know, good I mean, feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's. I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's gonna. We're not gonna like you know, like have some, some massive success, but I mean, it, for me, it's like, I listen back to it and I'm like, I am really, I'm really proud of this music. You know, I'm really, really, I, this is one why I want my kids to listen to this when I'm gone or when I'm here, <laughs> you know what I mean? And the kids do love it actually a lot. So it's cool. So for sure. The first time my kids saw me play a show, man, that was really intense. God, that was, that was very emotional. Was very, what very did they sad. think about it? They, 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 they loved it. You know, they loved it. You know, I, I don't, I mean, Logan, um, so Logan has a little bit of speech delay. He's, you know, he does speak, but, um, but he just, he loved it. The only problem is, is then when they came to see us play another show and another band was playing and another drummer got up and was, and started playing and it wasn't me doing it. That did not go over very well. I didn't really see that one coming. Well, you're so his that... favorite drummer. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah. But yeah, and then so he'll, they come over here and they hang out and they have little protective things, you know. But he comes over and he sits down and he goes, okay, one, two, three, go. <laughs> you know, just like wants me to start, you know. But yeah, so we hang out. And uh, and Mayura, his little sister, she's got, I mean, they they can share the little drum kit. There's a little drum kit over here. And uh but she's definitely the one that comes in and puts puts on the thing, sits down, and she's like, you know, she goes to town, 
And so she's definitely going to play. She definitely has the drive. Logan is just shy about it. Maybe he won't be. Um, their older sister, Arise, she plays guitar a bit right now. So Nice. And, yeah. First song she learned was Gloria by them. And I was like, that's pretty cool. That's you real know? cool. Yeah. I'm like, that's, that's, keep going. That's fine. It doesn't get a lot cooler than that, actually. I know. She was like, Dad, can I buy the wall on Pink Floyd, the wall on vinyl? I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Absolutely. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's gotta Sorry, feel. I... That's gotta feel great to see, to see your kids em- like just embracing music. Yeah, you know they love it for sure, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hoping Logan will be less shy about it, but you know, if, if not, you know, it doesn't matter either way. Sure. I want him to. Do, I want him to do whatever he's inspired to do. So. <laughs> so yeah. Do you guys have uh, plans? for tour or is it something that is sort of like earmarked for the future um we do i have another tour that i'm doing with a with a different band pretty soon uh and uh not really supposed to talk about it (laughs) uh uh, because it hasn't been a whatever i don't know when's this going to come out this the the this will come out in april this okay. will be the first, uh, whatever the first Monday in April is. Okay, well, I, I can say this much. The, by the time this comes out, the announcement for uh, Riot Fest that Sunny Day Real Estate's playing will be already made. So, Oh, rad. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, so I want to say what else we're doing, but I'm not, I'm not supposed to. I'm sorry. I know it seems so dumb, but I, you know. But you know, so yeah, I could this I, the the only officially announced <laughs> show at by the time this comes out will be Riot Fest Fest Riot Fest. But there's more, sure, more than that. So you guys have a a history of uh of on again off again. Yeah, that most certainly do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Whew. Yeah, but that's what I was gonna say is that uh what's even more exciting is being able to uh hash out stuff with jeremy and dan and basically have the conversations we've been needing to have for fucking ever and you know god damn man it's it's like you know why and i mean shit you know i guess it didn't help if i fell off the face of the earth for almost just shy of a decade but i mean you know it's like but a lack of communication just is definitely not a it's not a good uh, it's not a, it's not exactly a good ingredient for 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 healing that's for sure so but what's cool is now the lines of communication are not only open but i mean we went we went and like turned over some stones you know and you know like really hashed some stuff out and so that's been a really cool thing actually to be able to like actually be friends again you know, and hang out. And like Jeremy said, it's like when we were hanging out last, he was like, it always feels like home, you know, and it does. So, so yeah. So now it's like, we just want to be able to exist as a band and then whatever comes, you know, we'll see what happens. I have no idea. We do have a couple things but I just can't, I can't say sure. anything. I can't yeah, say yeah anything that's okay. It. It's so stupid, but. Uh, yeah. No, it's fine. I'm not going to press you about it either. Um, that's a relationship that you've had for 35 years? Yeah. I mean, I met Jeremy when he was 14 and I was 16. So, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that's a long time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, played together on and off since then. Like, the very first time we met, we, we jammed together. Is know? that right? So. Yeah, very first time we met, you know. But uh, yeah, but it was still kind of weird because he he liked my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one of the things you hashed out when you guys got together? <laughs> oh no, yeah, no, that's that's no. There's so there's that's water under the bridge many many times over. Uh, sure, uh, but yeah, but no, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's funny. He and I have run into that problem a couple of times. I mean, <laughs> 
liking the same. Anyway, it was it's a childhood thing, but anyway, whatever. What are you gonna do? Yeah, no, it's funny now. What it's are you really gonna funny. do? Funny, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's uh, that's super exciting. Yeah, no, it is. It's neat. So it's cool. I I'm just excited to be able to to do that band again to whatever capacity, and uh, and then have the assertion thing. And so it's just it's just really nice to to be creating and like arranging songs and it's just it's like it's my favorite thing to do you know i mean except, except for hanging out with my kids but you know song arranging is really fun do yeah. you um do you feel it seems like such an integral part and in like i you know when you talk about the excitement of creating music and arranging songs and mm -hmm. And just getting behind the kit and, and uh, exposing your kids to music. And do you do you think do you look at the nine years when you weren't playing and and think I wish that I would have played, or do you feel like it was a period of time that you needed to take for your personal growth? I, yeah, I mean, I try to not regret things like that because it's just the road the road that I took is the road that I took and it's just the way that it is, you know? Sure. And, uh, but I mean, you know, there's so many things, you know, it's like, you know, you know, like somebody asked me once they were like, do you have any regrets? And I was like, dude, all I know is the road that I, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I mean, in one way, yeah, I regret like drinking too much and acting like a jerk, you know, many times, but at the same time, ultimately big picture wise, the road, however bumpy, led to my kids. And so I don't give a shit. It's just like, I don't care. It is what it is, but it's, I'm with them. The road led me to them. And that's, that's it. You know, I can't, I would never, ever change anything because of that. So, so, you know, but I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I was just, I was hiding from music. I didn't even listen to music for that nine years when I did it, 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 I, any music at all, I would have this sinking feeling. Really? So I know as, as weird as it sounds, I know it sounds weird, but it was almost like me. It sounds, it's kind of pathetic, but it was almost like music PTSD or something. I don't know. Sure. You know, I, I know that sounds totally ridiculous. I'm just telling you. What I, don't, I, I don't think so. I know. mean, I don't think it sounds that ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the main reasons why I, I couldn't listen to it is because it was just a reminder that I was not doing this thing that I should be doing, you know, but I just was hiding from it, you know? And uh, so, you know, and I, I, you know, I part partially blame myself for not being more present and more aware, you know, and not, and, and, you know, not speaking up because I was, you know, in my own sort of weird PTSD fucking, you know, like nightmare, pretty much, you know. The reason being a bunch of people died, a whole fucking laundry list, and I'm not going to go into it. It's very brutal, but it was just like, bam, 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 bam. So I was also struggling with that. It was a combination of that, along with being frustrated about, you know, like working on that Brawley Banks record, but then all of a sudden, you know, working on the Sandy record, but then nothing. I was just like, I felt like, felt like I was being chased by death. And then there was this other thing that was saying, guess what? You don't get to make music anymore. You know, no, you're going to work really hard. I can't imagine the frustration that that would create. That sounds. Yeah. yeah. That so sounds I'm not saying it was me. I'm just saying these are the ingredients that basically, you know, sent me into my basically like thing where I was like, you know, it's like, I, you know, I didn't want to commit suicide. So the best thing, the closest thing to it is to basically be as be as good as dead to everyone as in just literally not there be there anymore no one knew how to get a hold of me no one knew where i was so forever for a long time so yeah i just didn't i just didn't want to interact with people anymore i kind of had it so so yeah kind of heavy i know but i mean, uh, you know, I mean i'm glad you found your way to the other side of it yeah, me and too. found your way back to the drums. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I but mean, I mean, you know, it's like you know, it's people. It's the loss. It's it's the massive loss. The the people dying, 
that's the thing that really messed with me. And, uh, you know, it's just like, and not just like, I mean, I'm talking to like, it just, just kept going. It was the weirdest thing, you know, and uh, it still trips me out. It's still weird to me. We're getting older, you know? buddy. Yeah, no, I know. But I mean, I'm not talking about old people. I know, but you know, it, the, but yeah, 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 yeah. The odds. No, I mean, get... I'm just, yeah, you know, yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying I can't handle death, but there was just this period where it was literally just everywhere I turned. It was the craziest thing. Anyway, so it uh, we have a mutual friend who passed four or five years ago, uh, and that's Joe Skyward. Mm-hmm. Um. What a nutter. Yeah. What a lovely wackadoo yeah, yeah. nutter. And hell of a bass player. What a monster bass player. Um, And I toured with him. And of course, yeah. if you tour with him, you probably saw him do naked push-ups. <laughs> I, I, not push-ups, but a couple other things. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly just walking around. Um, yeah, and not not a big but, yeah, fan yeah. of wearing his clothes just in leisure time. He was not a, really no, no that much a certain yeah that was clothing funny. optional kind of guy. Yeah, I know it was very funny. He's uh, like, oh dude, he's like, oh dude, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, can I talk to you about something? Yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, yeah. He's like, it's okay, dude. It's okay. <laughs> it's like okay for you, maybe. Um, but yeah, no, Joe is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe, definitely. Do you do you have any particularly funny uh, Joe story that you could maybe share? Oh my god! Ah, uh, oh man! Is it Joe playing on the live record? Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. I thought so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he he did all the he played bass for all the uh, touring we did for How It Feels. That's for sure. Oh man, I, there's oh my god. Uh yes, I do. I yes I do, but I don't they're not the most appropriate things though. That's a, yeah, <laughs> that's enough. I think anyone that uh anyone listening that knows Joe or has ever encountered Joe will just have a smile and that'll be Yeah, good. yeah, 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 yeah. I think I about mean, it you know, a lot. Not, yeah, yeah. I mean when I say inappropriate, I don't mean like it was a horrible thing, but I well anyway, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a PG thirteen to sure. maybe NC seventeen podcast. Okay, yeah, maybe like right in between there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm actually going to get a yes tattoo as a tribute to Joe with that you know, first. Yes was definitely a huge inspiration for me since I was very little. Like you know, my you know I was the youngest of nine kids, so records constantly. And so yeah, yes was one of them. <laughs> you know. For sure. That's cool. No one else in your family was a musician, though. My was brother, that... Brian, my mom played the, the clarinet oh. and she was and she was an ice skater. And uh, and then also uh, my brother, Brian, played drums for a bit. Um, but then he just didn't really keep going with it. And it sucked because the first time I saw anyone play drums was when he was playing in the basement of our house. And it was this old Pearl kit. And what sucked is, so I was totally blown away when I first saw the, ba- the whatever, the I, mallet beater, or whatever you want to call it, hitting the bass drum. I was like, oh my God, I thought the earth was going to crack in half. It was amazing. And uh, then some friends of my other brothers asked if they could borrow it. And then they never gave it back. And it's, that's what sucks is because I would have been using Dude. that starting at five, but then I had to wait till I was 13 because those jerks never gave it back. It sucked. Right. Yeah. If you guys, anybody, if you, if you're out there and you hear this anyway, what are you going to do? I want to go back and talk about sort of the, um, because it's, because it's rekindling the on again, off again for sunny day. Mm-hmm. And how it is a band that seems that uh, when Diary came out, it, it most certainly made a splash, but uh, you guys broke up and then made another record after that, yeah, which is like, 
oh, it's like breaking up with someone and like staying living in the house because you don't have somewhere else to go or whatever, right? It's just like, yeah. oof. Yeah. Um, but it's a band that just somehow continues to to real to to bring people in and uh maybe my perception is off and I don't know but seems like just continues to get bigger as the as the the as the story gets longer and as the mythology of the band grows is that yeah i i guess i i, I guess it sort of seems that way which is is always difficult for me to process you know it definitely was not not intentional like we didn't we certainly didn't like there was no strategy behind you know what i mean any anything that would at be all, an awfully actually. long game to have yeah cer- <laughs> certainly would you know what i mean yeah so yeah so i uh yeah so it's it's always surprising hard for me to process but never taken for granted you know, because all I ever really wanted to do was to make to was to make music or be in a band that made music collaboratively that had an impact impact on at least a few people, you know, like that's at least is going to like go down, you know, like in history, like people will listen to it for, you know, years and years and years, you know, like I feel fortunate to have been able to make a record, you know, at all, you know, like. I remember when John Atkins and I were in high school, we'd dream about making a tape. We'd be like, imagine if we had made like a, imagine if we recorded, oh my God, it was like this thing that was like just this impossible dream, you know? So I just feel lucky to have been able to actually done that and to keep doing it and to be able to do it now where I live, you know, and Justin and I do everything ourselves. So it's cool. So it's really neat. So. When does the second record come out? Not sure yet, probably. Uh, so it's basically, it's like 90, it's at the, it's at about the 94% mark as far as done. Uh, we just need to, Justin's got to finish a few vocals here and there. And, uh, and then I know that Jeremy was going to lay down some vocals on a, on a song, like along with Justin's for fun. So, and that's when been really cool too, is Jeremy and Justin have, and, uh, have really established a friendship. And so we like hang out the three of us. It's fun. It's cool. Awesome. It's neat. And, um, uh, but, the, so pr- I'm going to guess and say maybe in like two and a half, three months, maybe. Then when the next record comes, cut record comes out and it's going to be called basking in the gaslight. <laughs> Uh, i can dig it (laughs) yeah and uh you guys tracked it here in what what we're looking at now yeah 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 right here awesome Uh, this is the space i mean you kind of you can't really see there's a chair in the way but yeah it's just it's a room above the garage really how I mean, it's how much freedom and how great is it that this is where technology has brought us? Yeah, I know. It's great. It's really great. First time I recorded in a house was a, for the fire theft record. However, we had to basically fly everything up from California. We like, it was like, we had to fly like little airplane cockpits up, up to the, up to the house, <laughs> you know, and like set the airplane cockpits up in our basement. So but still, it was the first time recording in, in my house. And uh, I was like, oh, man, this is how I always want to do it. I mean, studios are great, but sometimes they can feel like a doctor's office right. in a way. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just there's just something about, you know, plus you can experiment with where you live and sort of like use the house and the room as an instrument itself and can find really, you know, like a new and interesting, innovative ways to, you know, mic stuff or put mics, you know, to get interesting sounds. So. There's a bit of pressure with a studio, not to mention that it costs a bunch of money. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> let's not let's not overlook the cost. Of yeah, yeah, it. no, yeah, definitely, yeah, no. It's like it's nice to be able to record stuff and evolve it, you know, uh, and not have to yeah pay it daily. 
I pay daily for it. I lived in a house, uh, in a strangely large house in um, up on Capitol Hill, and we tracked drums right in the living room. Yeah. And they were great. And we mixed them at a studio, but I mean, we, I say we. That's a very liberal well, use okay. of that I, I, term. I, I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. When I yeah when I say yeah when I say we recorded I, Justin's doing the heavy lifting lifting I have to specify that like he's the he's he's behind the he's behind the wheel as far as engineering and production really have you, you know, I lend an ear but have you gleaned any of that from him though I mean have you y- yes a bit but then also I'm gonna uh, he turned me on to this sort of like uh, like online logic course or whatever that i was actually planning on taking as soon as i can come up for here <laughs> as soon as i have enough right. time you know but uh so yeah i'm planning on doing that but no i definitely need to you know because we were talking about i was like dude i need to up my game a little bit like you need there, there there's stuff that i could be doing you know while you're doing this so i so i'm that's that's off in the distance i'm, I'm it's a goal that i'm working towards so for sure since coming back to playing and working on playing outside of like on your own as a as a drummer what is the what is the thing that you've noticed most that has changed or developed in you as a drummer well there were changes that i was in the process of uh, that I was that I was there was a process of evolution as, as far as my playing was going that it started happening that was ha- I was in the middle of when I stopped playing and um but uh I mean oh god I mean there's so many answers to that question I mean just everything is different now you know it's just like I you know, like I, I train stuff to a metronome constantly. You know what I mean? Everything that I, everything that I'm working on and I'm practicing, you know, that I, I do it to a metronome. Like if I'm practicing, this is practicing a song. I figure out, you know, the BPMs, like for the, the sunny day stuff, like I'm basically going and I'm like the first two records were done to a click. Right. So I wish they were, but they weren't. But so I'm basically going and finding like, what I think is like the sweet spot tempo wise, you know, cause it's pretty all over the place. <laughs> Those first two records, you know, the energy so, is great though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, but I find the sweet spot and then I'm basically setting the BPM to that and even up maybe a couple <laughs> BPMs and then training it like that. And, uh, with the song by memory and then just doing it to the metronome. That's just something that I've never, ever done before. Did you say <clears throat> you're training it like that? Like, are you approaching this? Are you approaching it like training, like physical training? Well, yeah, like for me, yeah. I mean, I guess I look at it like that because I, I did martial arts for seven years. And so for me, drumming is very kind of like, a, it's very much like a martial art. I found in just that training and drumming, uh, there's very similar, I think, you know, just the, the physicality of it, you know, and the, the, uh, you know, you're, you're literally, doing this uh, repetition of like certain motions and then burning them into your muscle memory. So you can literally have them there like on command and moving more from your subconscious mind as much as possible. Right. As opposed to your conscious mind. But that's what sucks about playing live is you can't get your conscious mind to shut the hell up and it's always getting in the way. So that's the real challenge is trying to quiet your mind. But I mean, uh, for me, the biggest, you know, like I, uh, like we, I, I had like, if I had a, if things didn't go according to plan during a show, the depression I would go into after a show was, I mean, I could say retrospectively ridiculous, but just like, I mean, dude, I would go into this depression that literally, I don't even know how I would climb out of. What's really cool is now it's like, if things don't go, go according to plan, it, I could, it just rolls off of me. I'm just like, it is what it is. You know, and that's kind of nice, <laughs> you know, to right. not basically, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's just, yeah, to be able to just let it go, you know. But I mean, you know, I still want things to go according to plan. 
<laughs> of course. That's why you make one, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. But, you know, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it is what it is. So. Uh, am I correct that you stopped drinking? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Mm. Yeah, it was the martial arts that, that it's like three years into the martial arts training, the drinking just disappeared. And I think it's because the uh, the drinking was a result of like ex- a lot of extreme anxiety, you know? So, so, you know, I'm sure there's a, quite a few people that might be able to identify with this. So like, you know, like two or three drinks, two or three drinks in, you feel the relief from like, from feeling like you're being choked or like, you know, you're out of breath because you're literally panicking, but don't understand why, you know? And uh, so then you have that relief from it. And then of course you want to stay there. So you keep drinking. And the next thing you know, you're blacked out, wake up. You're like, Oh, this horrible thing I did. If two or three drinks is a relief, just imagine what six or eight is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, precisely. So, yeah. So once I was able to uh, um, get a handle on, the, the reason why I was drinking once the, the martial arts helped with the anxiety. And once that was um, being dealt with properly, the, the um, self medicating approach, just literally, I didn't have to like say I'm quitting drinking. It literally just disappeared. I would even try to drink. I would take one drink, set it down, forget about it, you know, and it would be warm. I'd be like, Oh, <laughs> so right. it's cool. You know, I mean, you know, my brother, like I said, my brother, my brother killed, like, the one that shot himself in the head. He, he he was drinking himself to death, man, and, like, he just couldn't shake it. He would go into treatment, he would get out, and it was just the same thing. It was just, like, a broken record over and over again. But the reason why is because he, um, he didn't, he didn't attack the, the issue that was the real source of the problem. Sure. I won't go into what I won't go into what that was, but it's not entirely pleasant, and I can understand why he had a hard time facing it because it's hard, it's brutal. So, but I mean, but yeah, he wasn't able to. He he didn't. He wasn't able to like. He had a much bigger mountain to climb than I did. Like anxiety is is I mean it's kids play compared to what he had to deal with. I'll just say right. that. So. So yeah, but anyway, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm sorry to to bring up anything that is no 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 that, for you. No, just no, it's not a, totally not uncomfortable. <laughs> I just I feel bad because like sometimes these conversations will get heavy, and I'm like, it just, things got heavy, you know. So like, yeah, that, uh, just that's what life is, right? There, I tried. Yes, it most certainly is. I try to minimize it, you know. But sure, but yeah, I, I try to keep a sense of humor, of course. Not really about that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, anyway. yeah. What else can you do? Here we are. Mm, Indeed, <laughs> that's true. Um, how do you how do you work with anxiety now? How do you if you feel that coming? If if drinking and you said you did martial arts for seven years, I'm assuming that means you're not practicing. No, no, I, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not, I would like to again, but I mean, it's just a matter of having time and, and, uh, um, and, uh, and money also it's expensive. I could also train on my own, but it's just a matter of just all that energy that I would put towards martial arts training. I'm putting into, <laughs> into drum did you training. Ever, <laughs> did you ever watch or get, this is a funny side question. Do you ever see that movie <laughs> orgasmatron? Oh man, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. I or, 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 uh, orgasmo it was the it was the south park guys no okay maybe i haven't even heard there's of a that, funny actually. like s- subplot in the story about a guy because they're all martial arts expert like superheroes uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and there was a guy who practices hamster style <laughs> and it's a it's it's a the way it resolves is, is really funny i just Ham- I was, hamster style he practices that... hamster style yeah. That is funny. Ah, uh, yeah. I. <laughs> Sorry. What is that called again? I need to check that out. What is that? I, it's either called or- Orgasmo. Okay. It's Orgasmo is about um, a Mormon missionary who's a kung fu badass or like a martial arts 
super stud and he gets hired to star in these adult film features because his mission is in LA and Hollywood. And, um, but then they have a stunt guy come in and do the, the sex parts and he uncovers this, you know, uh, plot, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. It's the South Park guy. So what do you, of course. Do you yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Oh, but to answer your question though, uh, how do I deal with the anxiety now? I, um, uh, playing, playing every day, uh, really helps a lot. Um, you know, uh, just, just that, uh, just to, you know, sitting down and, you know, expressing yourself, you know, <laughs> to a certain degree, every single day helps a lot, but also, uh, I fortunately, and I hope this is, is always going to be the case. I, the, the anxiety attacks that I used to experience back then, I, the, after the training, um, I, I never, I, it just, I never got that level of anxiety again after that. I still get it, but it's not like that. I mean, it was really bad. I was, I was going to the hospital going, I'm dying, you know? Right. And, uh, uh, cause I thought I was, I was even taking tests, drinking this weird chalk while they were, you know, like with this x-ray machine looking at like what was going on, these cameras shoved down my throat, all this stuff. And they were like, dude, you need a different kind of doctor. <laughs> Oops. But, uh, so yeah, no, I just, uh, don't have to deal with that level of anxiety, but playing every day. And then also it's like, dude, when you have kids, it's like, there's no time for, you know, there's no time, you know, there's no time to, you know, it's like got anxiety, tough shit, you know, right. Now it's <laughs> not the time to self obsess. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely not. No, I get anxiety, you know, sometimes with, with them, like I get worried or like sometimes, you know, but that's about it. It's crazy that during a time when you would suffer from anxiety, you were not playing your drums daily you would only play with the band and and now that you are playing i'm sure i mean that there was there was a massive evolution but mm -hmm. it is it's incredible to me that full circle the thing that that you love to do is the thing that brings you peace mm -hmm. yeah no i mean it's nice to yeah to actually like play again and like sit down and like you know just sort of like work on patterns that I just have never, ever tried before things like that. And just try to like, just do things that are just broaden my horizons, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you find those things working their way into assertion songs? Those things uh, that are. Y sheer, y yes. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah. The things that are uncharacteristic of, of yeah, yeah, yeah. playing of the past. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, like, so I really started kind of messing around with all these different sort of um, patterns and, and things that were just sort of like um, counterintuitive to what I would naturally do. Uh, sort of at, like, you know, I'd be messing around with something and then I'll, you know, like, whatever, like, Justin will be like, I think I might have a riff for that. So that's only just started happening recently. So the application to of that to the assertion songs is going to be showing up probably in record three. So awesome. I would say, yeah. So, but we already have, we have so many songs recorded, you know, with the COVID thing we were recording, couldn't do anything else. So we just kept recording and then we were done recording. And so we just, the record came out, but we still couldn't do anything. So we just kept recording, you know, we still been doing that. And Justin has these files that have like hundreds of song ideas. And so I just, we just, we're going to be busy for a long time. So that's for sure. So with that, and then, you know, we'll sit down and we'll just start playing and a song will actually write itself. We're like, okay, so let's just back burner, <laughs> back burner, back burner, back burner. Here's yeah. something that I, that I fully neglected to do. Have you guys made a music video? No. Any any ambition to do that? Sure. It's just there's no money, no 
I mean, you know what I mean? Like we don't, yeah, sure. we don't, yeah. But uh, yeah, that would be, yeah, we would, we would do it for sure. Just the opportunity hasn't, hasn't arisen. So, but if it does, we'll do it for sure. Set up some iPhones and make the footage black and white and it looks. <laughs> well, yeah, actually. Well, yeah. I mean, we've made our own little sort of like, you know, we have made our own little uh, videos, not really videos, videos, but I mean, you know, like, uh, Justin's done some I you know iPhone camera work around me before, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. <clears throat> so but uh but yeah, I mean, you know, we made just fun little things, you know, on our own. But yeah, no, of course you can the playing field has also been leveled in in that regard as well, I would say, as far as making video that that art, you know. The playing field is a uh... I mean, the playing field isn't hardly even a playing field anymore. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Sorry, that's an old, that's an old, older school <laughs> term. Not old, old, but oldish. <laughs> the you know, uh, transitional the plane... term. <laughs> yeah, get off my lawn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm excited to hear this new record. Um, I will send you. Uh, I will send you a couple tracks. Oh, awesome! And just so you can check them out. Is the is the entire recording new format two piece, or uh, do you? It so the difference is is there is bass on it, but Justin's playing. It's ju- it's Justin and I, but Justin is playing bass and guitar, and then and singing. So it's just the two of us, but it's not the way we're adapting it live. Adapting it, uh, we're adapting it live now with just no bass right now, just using the octave. So. We'll see how maybe it goes. John, maybe John Atkins come play some bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I mean, we've actually been kind of. It's been kind of cool. I don't know. You can. I don't know if you get a chance to see it or, or something. I'll, I'll or you know, you can tell me if you think it works or not. But uh, you know, as the two piece. But it's kind of an I'm interesting sure challenge. Great. I've seen. Uh, I've seen two piece bands make a lot of take up a lot of sonic space. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You just it, need the right pedals and enough, enough exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, precisely. No, it's cool. Definitely. No, it sounds bigger. I'm just like, dude. It's like you should have your sound should have been this big all the, this whole time. I was like, come on. Uh, 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 like, uh, uh, but, you know. But no, it's cool. are are you using the same kit that you've used forever? No, no. So right when I. Right when I stopped playing, there was this custom, uh, this Craviato built, custom built this kit for me, thanks to Jared Alexander, who's an amazing drummer, an amazing person. Um, he was working there at the time, and they gave me 65 for 60, 60% off this uh, drum kit that they custom made for me. So, and, um, so that was really cool. Got the drum kit I was using in 1937 uh, Gretsch before that for a while, for quite a while. So, which was really cool. Um, but so that's been interesting. So, so sad because this literally like my dream drum kit literally gets custom made for me. And then I don't touch it for nine years, but it's, it's been, it's been traveling with me and now it's, being utilized daily <laughs> so you know and it's great i love i love these drums so for sure awesome i i'm just i'm a lot of people if they had a break that that was that, that long they would have gotten rid of whatever you know gotten rid of their guitar or their amp or their drums and i'm i'm glad that you did not i had to sell some stuff but i was like dude i i need to just Sure. You know, I mean, this, this, this drum kit, it was just a, you know, I, I was very fortunate that I was able to have this drum kit made for me. So I just wasn't, yeah, I was never going to let go of that, you know, no way, no way. I was like, just eventually, eventually, you know, and even if not, eventually still, I just, you know, a deal like this, that is, this, is, it doesn't come along every day also. Oh, definitely not, man. Yeah, no, I was going to get rid of something that I probably hard to replace. Yo, absolutely. For sure. I feel I unfortunately had to sell that Gretsch kit because I mean, you know, times are tough, but this kit, man, 
from my cold dead hands <laughs> that sort of thing <laughs> for sure um i i i feel like uh it would be a mistake for me to not at least mention to you that when i put a call out to people to say uh who would you like to see on drummer awareness month uh-huh. uh your name was brought up more than any other name really any other name your name most mentioned wow um and so huh. uh, you uh you're a you're a humble guy but i feel like you you know even if even if you get even if you get it a lot i i just would love for you to hear that you are much appreciated uh as a person as a player uh Man, I, that's something that years ago I wouldn't be able to process well. It's still hard for me to process, but I, it's like I never taken for granted. It's something that I appreciate. And I, I mean, it is hard for me to process though. But, um, but, um, uh, you know, it definitely doesn't go to my head. <laughs> to a, to to a fault actually like i you know i could use a little <laughs> i it'd be better you know i could use a little bit of like you know i'm you know <laughs> i like me look how great know. i am yeah yeah uh, you know but i yeah i've always been bad at that i'm better than i was you know i went from self-loathing to being cool and you know but uh i i i guess the difference now is i guess like i just have been trying to become a better drummer and give and I guess try to live up to, to people having that appreciation, you know, and uh, bring more out into the world as far as just honest self-expression and the documentation of the human experience, which to me, like that's the most important part of music is literally you're documenting your humanity, you know, and then it's people listen to it and they are, they're connecting to that, human experience that's literally being played to them musically, you know, and uh, that's all I really want to do. And I think that's maybe why people have an appreciation for some of the things that I've done is because it's always been that it's always been an honest snapshot of the human experience at that time, you know, so, but, uh, but, you know, so I, uh, so there's that, and then I just I just want to make as much music as possible for my kids to have, you know, that they can listen to or or not, <laughs> you know, but it's there for them, you know. This seems like I we're we're getting towards the end of our time. Um, sure. And uh, I always I want to end light, but I also want to ask you this question because it's a question it's it's a sense that I have as a 50 year old. And that is that, uh, I feel like, uh, everything I'm doing isn't a race against my own mortality, but I am certainly motivated by my imminent death. Uh, yeah. And I don't mean like I'm all dying next week, but I'm 50. Let's be, <laughs> let's, you know, if I got 25 more years in me, yeah, I'll yeah. be lucky. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> is it is that relatable? Do you feel do you feel motivated to document all of these moments um, because you know your time is finite? Um, I don't really look at it like that. I think, in a way, and in, in some ways, or in one way, I I, I look at it like. Um, probably shouldn't have survived a lot of things a long time ago. It's, it's astonishing that I did. And so I kind of feel like I'm living on time that I was granted, you know, a, sure. you know, a leave of whatever, <laughs> you know, like an extension. Um, so I'm just, now I just want to try to do the best I can with, with the time that I feel like I've, and lucky to have so you know um but yeah 
I used to be afraid of death. And I mean, of course, everyone is to a certain degree, because how can you not be? You know, it's just you have no idea. But I do know that energy doesn't stop. Energy continues. So as far as like the immortality of the human spirit, I feel like that's kind of definite at this point. So that's made me less weary, you know, of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I just, I, I just want to become a better drummer, better musician, better father. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I was a bad father, but I mean, I still, I'm still, I'm still learning as I go. You know, well, you're I mean? not I'm a bad still, drummer either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but I mean, you know, I just want to, I want to evolve and I want to improve with what time I feel fortunate to have been, you know, given, you know, yeah. that I shouldn't, that I, I shouldn't have, I feel like, but I'm lucky to for sure. That's, uh, that's beautiful. Well, thanks. Thanks you for having me on. This has actually been really cool. And I've been trying so hard to not yell this whole time. <laughs> Literally, I'm just like, and you know, what's funny is we're probably going to listen back and I'm going to be like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> you know? no, 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 no. You, you were yeah. uh, perfectly, yeah. perfectly conversational. Yeah. For anyone that, 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 that statement might be, if you're confused by what I just said, it's because we were discussing earlier how I'm hard of hearing. And so a lot of times people that are hard of hearing have a tendency to speak loudly and they don't realize it. And I'm going to turn you up really loud in the mix. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Dude, just go ahead and just listen to, and listen to any past interviews I've done. And be like, Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> Screaming at the guy. <laughs> so yeah. But you um, know, so. Uh, before we before we kill the recording, uh, where can people find Assertion music? So Assertion, um, there's Bandcamp. It's on iTunes, Spotify. You can also I, there might be some vinyl left that you can buy from Spartan Records. Um, I think it's SpartanRecords.com. I think. Um, we have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. Assertion Band is what it is. And that's assertion as in like being assertive. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> cause Justin and I both need to work on it. So we named the band that. So, um, and uh, yeah. And, um, and uh, Riot, I, Riot Fest, Sunny Day Real Estate. That much I can say. And when uh, is that? I don't know. I don't know when Riot Fest is. <laughs> oh, the Riot Fest lineup hasn't been announced. No. Until April. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, but it's going to be announced. It's going to be announced this month, though. Okay. So, yeah. So, if for so any reason it, the that. announcement doesn't go through, gets delayed, I'll let you know. I'll shoot me know. a message and I'll I'll push this episode back in the in the month, you know. Okay. All right, I'll let you know. As far as I know, everything is going to be announced this month. But it, just in case, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let you know. Because, oh man, I don't want to deal with that. Whew. Yeah. yeah, no, and I, I, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't put you through that. No, I know that. I know that. <laughs> hey, man, um, I really appreciate your time. This has actually been a really, really great, interesting conversation.